guys, welcome back to How To Escape. This is Rob Rina, and today we're going to be talking about how to hardwire a dash cam in our 2013 and up Ford Escapes, but this can also apply to any vehicle with this similar type setup. Most dash cams come with three main wire leads. In this dash cam video, we're going to be featuring a yellow ACC line, a red VCC positive line, and a black ground line. Reference to the wiring, ACC is the circuit that's only on when the car is turned on. VCC positive is the circuit that's always connected to the battery, regardless of whether the keys are in the ignition or not. And the ground is just going to be any location where a bolt or screw is bolted into the frame or bracketry of the vehicle. Many dash cam kits come with a voltage protection circuit, as shown in this kit right here. This circuit protects your vehicle's battery from being drawn past a dangerous threshold when the car is turned off. In this tutorial, we're going to be connecting these wire leads to fuses located in the fuse box behind the glove box in the front passenger footwell. Here's a tutorial on how to get there. To make things easy, let's scoot the seat back. Pull the weather stripping from the door jam, and then use your hands and or a trim tool to remove the outer panel that covers the side of the glove box. This should come free fairly easily. You can then put back the weather stripping just to keep things tidy while we work. Pull the two black push rivets that secure the cover for the fuse box footwell area. Open your glove box and you'll notice in the top that there are two T15 screws. The next step will be to remove those screws. Now looking underneath, there are two 8mm screws which carry a lot of the weight of the glove box. Remove these 8mm screws. Using a drill and an 8mm socket adapter can really speed this one up. I didn't have to use a socket. Now that the hardware is removed, we can pull the whole glove box. You can jostle it side to side if you need to break it loose, it's just snaps holding it in there. Be aware though that when you go to pull it free, the glove box light has a connector at the top. Release the connector, pull the cord, and then you can lift the whole assembly out. Here is the fuse box that we'll be working in to hardwire our dash cam. Let's jump right to the wiring plan for our Ford Escapes, and afterwards we'll do a demo on how to find out these circuits for any vehicle. This is the fuse box diagram for the fuses located in the front right passenger footwell behind the glove box for 2013 through 16 Ford Escapes. I'm going to cut right to the chase and talk about the fuses that I found and used for the wiring in this video. F74 is a VCC positive circuit. It's the high beam headlamp supply and it's a 15 amp mini fuse. The ACC fuse I chose was the electronic 15 feed, which is a seven and a half amp mini fuse. And then for ground, I added a ring terminal and secured it to the bracketry in the glove box area. To tap into the ACC and VCC positive fuse lines, in order to make it robust, I used two fuse taps as shown in the top right here. Just as a quick concept sketch here, a fuse tap allows you to add a second fuse for the wire that you're adding to the fuse's location in a robust manner. What you do is you pull the existing fuse from the fuse box, plug it into the lower two slots of the fuse tap, and then add your second fuse up top, which protects your line that you're adding to the fuse location. You insert the fuse tap back into the fuse box and everything should run as normal with your new line protected. Here we're going to show you how to find your ACC or VCC positive fuses using a light tester or multimeter. If you want to use the ones that we already suggested, you can skip this step, but this is for any vehicle. With the keys out of the ignition, connect the ground to the bracketry. Use your light meter to touch the metal tabs on each end of the fuses. If they light up with the keys off, they're likely VCC. If they don't light up, like these ones, Put your keys in the ignition, turn it on, and check again to see if they do light up. If they do light up, they are likely ACC, whereas the ones that lit up without the keys are VCC. A major safety note is that it's not recommended to use a fuse associated with any high stakes or safety related functions such as airbags or ABS. Choose a fuse with low stakes function. Now let's prepare our wire leads by creating our wire harness to tap into the fuse box. To prepare the wires for connection to our fuse box, we're going to be adding the fuse taps, but before crimping them, we need to strip excess insulation to 
be able to fold the wire back on itself and twist so that we can make the gauge seem heavier to better grip the crimp. Here we're crimping the ground to the black wire. Then we're crimping the VCC positive to its fuse tap and then ACC to its fuse tap. We'll follow up with black electrical tape and wrap around the crimp connections for strain relief and tidiness. Finally for wire prep, add a 5 amp mini fuse to the upper slots of each fuse tap. Alright, now here comes the fun part to connect our wiring to the fuse box and ground. Using the fuse puller tool located in the fuse box from your engine bay, you can pull the 7.5 amp fuse that we selected to use for your ACC circuit. Insert that fuse into the lower slots of your ACC fuse tap, and this is what it should look like. 5 amp fuse on the top, 7.5 amp fuse on the bottom, and then you're going to take that fuse tap and stick it right back into the same location where you just pulled that 7.5 amp fuse from. That's it for your ACC circuit. Once again, we're going to use our fuse puller tool and pull out the selected VCC positive fuse. We're going to install that 15 amp fuse into the lower positions on the fuse tap for the VCC positive line. And then we're going to reinstall that VCC positive fuse tap into this location in the fuse box. Now there we have our VCC positive and ACC fuse taps in place. Now let's attach our ground. I had looked around for an available existing screw to mount the ground terminal to, but nothing was within reach of the wire length. The next best option was to use a self-tapping sheet metal screw to secure the ground lead to the bracketry available and keep it out of the way of the glove box. The bottom left area is where I secured it, as you can see here. Let's quickly verify that our wiring works by turning the ignition on. Hardware complete! The next steps will show you how we routed the wiring to keep things discreet and tidy. Alright, so now if we're going to talk about routing of this dash cam, it is my hope and intent to take this cord. We're going to run it up to the headliner, go all the way across, down into the B pillar column, to the weather stripping, follow that down, around and into the area here with the fuse boxes. This camera came with a tool, which they called a crowbar, to wedge the wire into the headliner area as well as in the trim. You could use any trim tool that you want really to do this job. I pulled the weather stripping away from the door frame again to be able to pull the pillar cover away to better tuck the wire behind the plastic here. Then we ran the wire down between that plastic trim behind the weather stripping area into the side of the glove box space. Now you're left with all the slack that you need to manage without getting it caught when you put the glove box back in. Here we have a red zip tie that we used to secure the wire to act as a strain relief. And then we ran the wire down the side of the vehicle, hugging it to the right end of this bar. To keep it out of the way of the glove box, we ran it along the bar, secured it to the same bracket as the ground, and then bundled the excess gently on the back side of this bracket, including the voltage regulator. And then next, we're going to show you the ground, as well as the other wires that we kept away from the light bulb by gently zip tying to that wire harness. Once that's all done, let's get our glove box back in there. Here we're going to reinstall the light for the glove box. Next, insert the whole assembly back into place. Now to reinstall the side trim panel, open the glove box, pull the weather stripping away, and align the push tabs with the slots. Push the weather stripping back in place. Reinstall the two 8mm screws. Again, a drill with an 8mm attachment would speed things up here. Reinstall the two T15 screws on the inside upper parts of the glove box assembly. And finally, install the inner floor cover with the two black push nuts. Now you can sit back and have the peace of mind of having a new dash cam successfully wired to your vehicle.
Start recording video. All right, well that wraps up this video on how to install a dash cam on our 2013 through 2016 Ford Escapes. If this was helpful, please like it, share it, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for the review of this very cool 70 My M500 dash cam.